Okay. Okay, guys. Um, so my name is uh, Niels, and I'm uh, going to teach you how to play Monopoly today. Uh, so bear with me. Um, I work for uh, Godot Driven. I have a PhD in parallel computing uh, from the TU Delft, and I work for GDD uh, basically as a data scientist or a data engineer, or maybe something in between. I really don't know. But basically, my, my job resolves around this uh, drinking coffee and waiting a lot. Uh, looking at this spark thing, nowadays there's a one six here, but that's uh, minor Paralyze details. Paralyzed more. Paralyzed more, yeah. Big data sets. Um, so, Monopoly. Uh, it's actually a really old uh, board game, um, created in 1935. It was based on something else. Uh, it's for two to six players, and what you do in the game is you buy houses and hotels on streets, and the last man standing wins. Pretty simple game. Um, so, in Dutch, it's actually pronounced as Monopoly. I'm Dutch. I forget this, uh, the Monopoly uh, pronunciation of it. So, probably I'm going to say Monopoly a couple times. So, forgive me for that. Um, so, some short intro and terminology on the, on the Monopoly game. I did it correct, huh? Um, so, basically, you have players who traverse the board by uh, rolling two dice. And when they land on an unknown property, uh, they can decide to buy it. And if you own all the properties of a single color, so the properties have uh, colors, basically groups of two and three, um, you can buy houses. And if you buy uh, five houses, or if you attempt to buy five houses, you get a hotel. And basically the rent, uh, which another player needs to pay when he lands on such a street, increases by the number of houses you put on the, on the street. So quite simple up to now, but they thought of some, uh, some special rules. I wrote a couple down. So if you, if you pass go, you receive $200. All fines are paid into the free parking space, which is in the middle of the board. Um, and when a player uh, does not buy an unknown property, you actually have an, an auction. So there's an auction between all the players and the highest bidding uh, guy wins. Um, so rolling doubles three times in a row gets you out of jail. Uh, and you can actually go into jail by landing on a special position on the, on the board. If you land on the go uh, position, you receive $400. Um, oh, again, the, the rolling doubles. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to escape the jail, you can also just pay $50 fine. Uh, that's, uh, that's also a lot. At least some of the rules, uh, or at least those are the rules I played with when I was little. But uh, when I started implementing this game, I, I figured out that actually those are not correct. <laughs> Paying everything into free parking is, uh, is not part of the game. <laughs> and also landing on Go and receiving $400 is also clearly, uh, it's a clearly, it's a no-no. <laughs> so actually, how much free time do I have, right? Because, okay, it's an interesting game, but why would you attempt to solve it? How many time? Yeah. Uh, so within GoData Driven, we have this thing called GDD Fridays, which is once a month. Uh, it's basically a, a free day of work, but you can spend on anything. And this colleague of mine, Vincent, he's not in the room, uh, unfortunately. He made this uh, Monopoly Simulations blog post during one of those. And what he did is he implemented a small Python script, which would roll dice, and then and go to jail if you land on the go to jail uh, thing. And what he created was, was this probability distribution. Uh, are some uh, <coughs> tiles in the board uh, visited more often than others? So one uh, clearly pops up. It's, it's the jail itself. Because if you go there, you stay there a lot. And the 30 is the go to jail tile. So you, you don't actually land there. But what, uh, what shows up is this, are these spikes after the jail? Anyone have any idea why that is? Because you used to escape from jail. Yeah, yeah and that's it. So if you want to escape the jail, you roll doubles, and doubles are obviously two, four, and that's a higher probability. So you would imagine that those tiles are more of a higher. <coughs> I don't know. You can earn more money if you earn those. Uh, you you buy those tiles. Uh, but obviously, Vincent, my colleague, is a true data scientist. Uh, so he made a script, 46 lines of, uh, of Python. But yeah, no, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a mid, an engineering guy, so 
yeah, the lack of unit testing and uh, no proper RR stuff. So I improved it. Uh, maybe maybe not so much, but uh, at least it's now 800 lines. <laughs> that's, that's something. Eh? Um, so again, how much free time do do I have? So what I implemented is uh, is, a, is a board object, obviously a player object, a deed object, and the bankrupt exception. Why? That's everybody dreamt of uh, implementing a bankrupt exception, right? Uh, and it's actually unit tested, so 80% coverage. It's more or less acceptable, should be okay. So this player object is basically what this talk uh, resolves around. Um, so you can implement your own AI players by implementing those four uh, methods. Uh, so you can buy a position, or a method is called after you land on a position you can buy. Um, you can, if there's an auction, you, this bid position is called. Anything else, it's basically the end of the turn, you can do anything you like. And there's a raise amount, like if you need to pay rent to some other player, you don't have enough cash left, you need to sell something, you can decide what to sell. So then I, I implemented some, uh, some players, the buy nothing player, SD does nothing, just walks across the board. Uh, buy all, it just tries to buy everything, put hotels everywhere, just uh, by from and by between, because I, I, I figured out from the probability that maybe by from or by between I could optimize a bit already on the on the positions to buy. And I did a thousand games, and this is the result. So buying nothing doesn't really get you anywhere. Uh, buying all and buying from um, works quite well, and the by between is also uh, not that interesting. Uh, by, by from the ten is the tenth. Uh, it's like the, the first uh, tile after the jail, like the, the tenth position on the tenth index. Like Eleven, but good, yeah, good scientist, so it's ten. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, so this is the money raised and invested in those tiles. Right? Again, the zero spot being start, and then you know, in, in Dutch it's ons dorp, and uh, so, and then the cover status somewhere here. The, 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 the expensive ones. And what you see is actually a couple of things. One of the things is that these are the railroads. So the railroads are actually the ones who raised more money than what we actually invested in them. So those seem like, at least in this configuration of players, seem like a good investment. And you see the cheap ones doing quite well. Like the, the Osdorp, uh, the, the first two. They do quite well. At least this guy is making more than it was invested in it, and this guy is actually doing pretty well. Um, another one, the big one, I think that's actually luxury tax. It's $200 you need to pay when you land on it. Um, $200 is actually quite a large amount, because if you play with four players, and they're all AI, and they're basically doing the same thing, getting a full core is not that trivial. So $200 is then actually quite a high <coughs> rent price for a tile. So you can see the spike here. And also this guy, uh, 38, is also uh, $75 something something checks. But which of the tiles actually help you to win? Yeah? Because, okay, return on investment is fine, but it doesn't, yeah, you just break even or you get a bit more back than you originally put in. You still go bankrupt because some guy on the color style, that doesn't really matter, right? Uh, so that, that's actually true. <coughs> you see that the, 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 the expensive ones actually cause more bankruptcy than uh, everything else. And especially the, the ones in the beginning, I think, because you get the $200 when passing go. So you just had this $200 of uh, uh, free money, and now you land on the first one, doesn't have a high uh, nightly rent price, so you don't go bankrupt. But just manually selecting uh, uh, or manually curating players was actually quite cumbersome because um, how many houses should you actually build or which of the houses should you build or it's quite a, a computationally big uh, problem. So what I did is I made a GA player. It's a genetic algorithm player. <laughs> Smart, eh? I like it as well. Um, so what are genetic algorithms? So 
So it's a, it's a search heuristic, heuristic, um, which converts, or which, um, and in order to use it, you have to convert the search space into chromosomes. So let's say it's your DNA of your problem, right? So you have one and three and that sort of stuff. And you have to implement a, a fitness function. So this basically converts your chromosome into a score, which obviously is 42. Sorry, yet another joke. Um, and then after uh, evaluating your population in a single round, you select the top X best performing chromosomes, you mutate a couple of them by flipping some bits or doing some random stuff, and you generate offspring by combining <coughs> those you selected, the couple random ones, and yeah, you, can, you generate uh, offspring. And you stop after X generations. But this is uh, whatever you would like. Uh, you could do 10, 15, if you're in a hurry, you do two, probably don't get nice results. And this is a more visual representation for some of you. So this is the genetic algorithm. You have two algorithms, and you generate the offsprings by combining those. So what I did is I basically, I have a coin flip for each index. Um, I do a coin, flip, a coin flip between A and B for the first position, A1, so this guy gets a 1. And then, okay, that's a couple of zeros. But then uh, the last two are actually from, uh, from this algorithm B. And the same you do for, for the child. So you basically you combine more or less randomly uh, well-performing or somewhat well-performing uh, chromosomes. So, a chromosome is actually, in my case, um, a list of integers, and it's, it gets translated to how many houses you would like to buy on a certain position in the game. So zero means don't buy this street at all, one means buy, two to five means build one to four houses, and then six build, means build a hotel. So for this chromosome, okay, obviously you can't buy star, so that's zero, and six, you're gonna do Mediterranean Avenue. Uh, zero, then a five for Pelting Avenue, you wanna buy the, the railroad, and, and so on. So basically it's like a, setting a goal, what you would like to buy for in this particular game. But the fitness function is also quite tricky, um, because how, how can you evaluate uh, a monopoly play. Yeah? I'll, so I basically came up with the first strategy. I just play against the buy all player, which is a sensible uh, tactic, and I count the number of games you play. And the other one is much more advanced. It came from my, my colleague Vincent, and it's using true skill, which is a magic algorithm I was playing a bit. But I'm not sure if either is correct. So. If you have any questions or any remarks regarding this, feel free. So the buy all. Like I said, we, we play a thousand matches against the buy all uh, player, and we count the number of times you win. Uh, we evaluate for 10 generations. We have a population size of 56. I have eight cores in my laptop. 56 divided. Uh, 20 best performing. Do some uh, um, uh, mutations. And on my laptop, a single generation takes a, a minute to evaluate. So 10 generations, like 10 minutes, 12, I don't know, in that neighborhood. So what do you see? If, if you look at the, the, how the scores develop over these generations, okay, they, they go up. That's, a, that's already a nice indication. You see a clear global, or lo, not global, local optima. So this guy was, uh, actually for three generations, we were stuck at this 520 level. And then I guess by either the random mutations or by combining two of the non-really performing ones, we broke up out of this uh, local optima and actually went to search for a more global optima. Probably I should have run it a couple more iterations because it's not level up. So, this is the player who wins. Looks impressive, I guess. <coughs> it's a big, big sentence at least. But it's a 
strategy, which is better than buying just everything and trying to build hotels everywhere. But is it the best monopoly strategy? Uh, because basically what we now did is we have this dimension, and we have a buy-all player, and we now have every, my, my new GA player, this guy, is at least better. That's what we know. <coughs> and there's probably a couple which are worse. But who's actually better than this GA player? Because maybe there's another dimension, somewhere here, of people which are better than this GA player and yeah, there's no it's not a global optimum. It's it's a single dimension. So how could we solve this? Well, I asked uh, my, my Vincent again. Um, and he said true skill. Something nice, something developed by Microsoft for the Xbox online multiplayer something. Uh, and in my understanding, well, he told quite quickly, so I, I don't really know if it's true. <laughs> Each player has a, has a belief of skill. It's like a probability distribution. Like, uh, this could be somewhat good player, somewhat there. And this guy could be a bit bad, but we really don't know. There's still a bit of a probability curve around it. But when you win or lose from a, from a player, you, you basically combine those two probability distributions to, yeah, quickly um, get new probability distributions. That's how Vincent is, room, is in the room. He's not. So that's uh, unfortunate for you. If you have questions, send them by email, I guess. So this is an example of his uh, his blog, actually. I just copy pasted it in. So this is two players. This is before and this is after. And actually, this this uh, second player. So